Here we're going to just do a quick little lecturette on the arteries of the pelvic limb and then also talk about the nerves of the distal pelvic limb. Okay, starting with the primary blood supply to the digit of the hind limb in the horse, we have the external iliac, which is going to give rise to the femoral artery. Off the femoral, we're going to find the saphenous artery. Remember that the distal caudal femoral is where the femoral artery then becomes the popliteal artery. The popliteal artery will give off both a cranial and a caudal tibial artery. As we see here, the caudal tibial will join the saphenous, does a neat little loop that goes something like this, and then continue as the saphenous. Our main supply is the cranial tibial artery, and it will continue distally. It changes its name to dorsal pedal. The dorsal pedal will then give off a perforating tarsal artery, which actually goes between the bones of the tarsus. And after it does that, it continues as the dorsal metatarsal artery 3. Notice that that dorsal metatarsal artery 3 is running between the cannon bone and the lateral splint bone. And then just near the distal end of the splint bone, it's going to course more plantarly and then divide into our medial and lateral plantar digital arteries. Likewise, in the bovine, the external iliac will give off the femoral. You see the saphenous coming off the femoral here on the medial surface of the thigh. After the distal caudal femoral, we have the popliteal artery. After giving off a caudal tibial, it continues as the cranial tibial. So very much similar to the horse. We get to the tarsus. It then becomes the dorsal pedal. Likewise, we're going to have a perforating tarsal. And then that dorsal artery continues as dorsal metatarsal artery 3. We will then have a perforating metatarsal more distally here, giving us our dorsal common digital artery 3. Notice how similar this is to the front limb. We will have inner digital arteries that then give off our plantar axial digital arteries 3 and 4. So your big catcher here is where we're talking plantar versus palmar in the front limb. Okay, let's look a little bit closer at the distal vessels. So we have the cranial tibial. I don't show that in the equine side because we are looking at just the plantar view. Becomes the dorsal pedal as it crosses the tarsus gives off the perforating tarsal artery and at that point it then becomes the dorsal metatarsal artery 3. So the dorsal metatarsal artery 3 in the bovine is going to stay on the dorsal surface whereas we see looking at that lateral image notice in the horse how it courses down to run along the cannon bone and the lateral splint and there's a very distinct groove right there you should be able to see. Okay, that dorsal metatarsal artery 3, after coursing more distally, it comes around to the plantar side and then divides into the plantar digital arteries. Okay, on the bovine, that dorsal metatarsal artery 3 stays on the dorsal side, gives off a perforating metatarsal. We then have dorsal common digital artery 3. It's going to join with the plantar common digital artery via interdigital arteries and give rise to our plantar axial digital arteries 3 and 4. So I'm showing now the saphenous coming in. The saphenous is on the plantar surface is going to give off multiple branches after being joined by the perforating tarsal. 
These include medial lateral plantar arteries, which are going to run alongside the flexor tendons. Then we also have the plantar metatarsal arteries. Notice that they come in and join into the distal end of the dorsal metatarsal artery 3 as well as the plantar digital arteries in the equine for a backup supply to the plantar digital arteries. Likewise from the plantar surface of the bovine we're going to have that backup supply to the dorsal metatarsal artery 3. Okay, when the plantar digital arteries in the horse get down to the cannon bone they're then going to create a terminal arch in the semilunar canal. And they go through what are known as the foramen solaris. Okay, so that's the vessels. Moving on to the nerves. Okay, the distal hind limb nerves of the equine, you need to remember that they are not the same as the front limb. Okay, there is some confusion about that amongst people. The lateral medial plantar nerves are coming from the tibial nerve. There may or may not be a communicating branch between those. When they get down to the fetlock they will give off a dorsal branch and continue as the lateral and medial plantar digital nerves which are going to supply the plantar digit and hoof just as the palmar digitals did in the front limb. Okay, the dorsal branches are then going to supply just a small portion to the dorsal digit and hoof. Not as much as what we saw in the front limb. We also have lateral and medial plantar metatarsal nerves which are coming from the deep branch of the lateral plantar nerve, very similar to the front limb. Deep branches are going to supply the suspensory ligament the plantar metatarsals will supply the suspensory ligament as well as the plantar fetlock joint and pouch. There will be some fibers that are going to join the dorsal metatarsal nerves. Okay, we did not see those dorsal metacarpal nerves in the front limb. So there's going to be a lateral and medial dorsal metatarsal nerves. The lateral one is going to course with the dorsal metatarsal artery 3. These are going to be supplying the most of the fetlock joint as well as most of the dorsal digit and hoof. So this is something different than in the front limb. Remember that it was the palmar metacarpal nerves that did most of the fetlock joint in the front limb. Okay, let's do a little comparison. Front limb, hind limb. Front limb Remember the medial aspect was covered by the median, the lateral aspect by both the median and ulnar. Whereas the hind limb, we're going to have the tibial nerve on the plantar aspect, both sides, and the deep peroneal on the dorsal aspect. So palmar nerves, remember they supply branches to the palmar pouch of the fetlock joint. They also supply the flexor tendons. The palmar digital nerves are going to basically supply all the palmar aspect of the digit and hoof. Likewise, the plantar digital nerves are going to supply all the plantar aspect of the digit and hoof. The dorsal branches on the front limb, remember they supply most of the dorsal digit. Whereas, as I said, in the hind limb, those dorsal branches just supply a very small portion. The deep branch of the lateral palmar, remember, did the distal carpus, suspensory ligament, and distal check ligament in the front limb. And the hind is just going to supply the suspensory ligament. More importantly, the palmar metacarpal nerves in the front limb, remember they were the primary supply to the fetlock joint and they supply just a small amount of the dorsal skin, maybe a little bit of the corium of the hoof on the medial side. Whereas here, the plantar metacarpal nerves are going to take care of that plantar fetlock joint and pouch 
similar to the palmar nerve branches did in the front limb. So we have no dorsal metacarpal nerves, but we do have dorsal metatarsal nerves. So these dorsal metatarsal nerves off the deep peroneal, they are going to be the primary supply to the fetlock joint and get most of the dorsal digit and dorsal hoof. Okay, bovine nerves. We've got the sciatic nerve, common peroneal nerve, tibial nerve. Common peroneal is going to have a deep and a superficial branch. Okay. Overall, just remember the dorsal surface of the digits is primarily the superficial peroneal nerve. For those of you who like a little more information, I present you with this. And then the plantar surface is primarily by branches of the tibial nerve. Okay, just a little more detail. Just reviewing front limb versus hind limb in the bovine. In the front limb, both dorsal surfaces of digit 3 and the axial dorsal surface of digit 4 superficial radial. Both the dorsal and palmar abaxial surfaces of 4 was by the ulnar. And then the both axial surfaces and the abaxial surface of 3 was taken care of by branches of the median nerve. There's some similarities in the hind limb in that we see that the superficial peroneal, the medial branch, is going to get similar to what the superficial radial did. We're going to get the lateral branch of the peroneal getting the dorsal abaxial surface of 4. But the lateral plantar of the tibial is going to get both the plantar and some of the dorsal surface. So it's going to be very similar to the ulnar. And then the medial plantar of the tibial is going to cover the same as the median did in the front limb. We also get a little bit of the deep peroneal getting the axial surfaces on the plantar side. That's all I got.